If you're going to do a case that requires one lung ventilation, you're going to need the following bits of kit. These can all be found in the one lung trolley in the Theatre 5 prep room. A double lumen tube, which looks like this in the box. A right angle clamp. A 20 mil and a 5 mil syringe. You'll also need to use the slim ambuscope, which can be found on the difficult airway trolley. And I suggest you use a C-Mac for placing the double lumen tube. Double lumen tube can be found in a box that looks like this. If we open it up, we find the double lumen tube, some connectors, and some suction catheters. And we'll put these to one side for now. We don't need those at the moment. Okay, so now I'm going to talk you through how to prepare the double lumen tube before you insert it. First, we'll open this one up. So this is a size 35 double lumen tube, 35 left. Uh, we're using a small tube today because we've got to fit it in the mannequin. Generally, you'd use a 37 left for women, a 39 left for men. You might use a 35 like this in a particularly small patient, or you might choose to use a 41 left in a particularly tall patient. Before we insert the tube, we need to prepare the connectors and prepare the tube itself. Inside the tube is a stilet. We need to remove this and then replace it before we insert the tube. We need to disconnect the catheter mount connectors here and insert them into the proximal ends of the tube here. Then we need to complete the Y connector by attaching these tubes to the blue connection port. Finally, we replace the stilet by placing it down the blue bronchial lumen and push it in until it's nice and snug. You're now ready to go ahead and insert your double lumen tube. So for the purpose of this video, I'm using a standard Mac 4 Lering Escape. In real life, we'd suggest that you use a C-Mac. I'm going to go ahead and try and get a view of the cords. Thank you. So once the tip's through the cords, you can ask your anaesthetic assistant to remove the stilet. And then as we advance the tube, we're going to turn through 180 degrees and then come back to the middle to 90 degrees from where you started to go through the carina. So now we can go ahead and connect our tube. To do that, we're going to use the connector that we prepared earlier. It's important to make sure the top caps are closed at this point. And now we need to confirm placement of the tube. This is a four step process. Step one is just like any normal ET tube. So we're going to ventilate look for chest rise, inflate the tracheal cuff, and confirm that we have CO2. Step two, we're looking for the fact that we can isolate uh, either lung, and so we're looking for placement of the tube down the left main bronchus. To do that, we're going to clamp the tracheal lumen here, and open the top cap. We now look at the chest, and hopefully we see unilateral chest rise on the left. Step three is looking, feeling for a leak and inflating the bronchial cuff. So I'm feeling for a leak while my anaesthetic assistant is inflating the bronchial cuff. She's going to do this half a mill at a time until my leak decreases significantly and it's there. It is worth at this point just feeling the tension in the bronchial cuff. That might be useful later if the tube moves. Step four is we swap the clamp, so close the top cap, swap the clamp to the bronchial lumen and confirm we can ventilate the opposite side. 
That's our clinical check complete. And we now know that we have placed the tube correctly. We'll now demonstrate how to confirm correct tube placement bronchoscopically. First, ensure correct orientation by identifying trachealis. If the tube is placed correctly, we should see a small rim of blue bronchial cuff in the left main bronchus. To check we're definitely looking at the true carina, advance into the right main bronchus and identify the unique right upper lobe with three divisions.